Travis Jankowski, and uh, my life has been renewed through Christ. Um, so my testimony isn't anything special. I uh, was born in uh, you know Pennsylvania, grew up in a Catholic school, went to Catholic school from kindergarten until 12th grade. Graduated, uh, went to college, um, but I always kind of knew Christ, but I never really had a relationship with Him. Um, I feel like the relationship started once I got to the minor leagues. Um, had a buddy of mine on a bus trip who was a non-denominational Christian, just a good guy. You could tell there was something about him, and uh, instantly him and I connected. We started talking on a bus ride. It's like 2 a.m. We're going from Modesto, California, down to Lake Elsinore, and uh, we're talking about just random stuff, whatever came to our mind. And, you know, Jesus got brought up, and we started talking about heaven and. You know, I could just tell he had a sense of an, an understanding of heaven that maybe I couldn't quite comprehend at that point. So, got to talking to him, talked to him a little bit more. Um, I didn't know about baseball chapel at the time, so he invited me into baseball chapel. Started listening to the word, connected with a couple. Uh, you know, we had a, a really good, uh, really good chaplain there uh, in Lake Elsinore. So, connected with him, got to know him, and so I'd say that's when I was really introduced to it and kind of started to. Uh, I guess understand that you know living in the word and understanding the word was more than just having someone you know kind of dictate it to you. Um, and then my fiance, once I met her, she's a you know super spirit filled girl and uh, really you know she really got me into the word and into you know a, a church where I I felt comfortable and, and understood you know what the message was and uh, yeah it was just it, it took off from there man I couldn't be in a better place right now. So I was in Nashville when I got the, the call. Um, great manager, Jamie Quirk, and I was playing pretty well. Um, I, uh, I was on the on deck circle, ready to start the game off, leading the game off, and I'm walking to the plate and the manager calls me back. He says, hey, I can't let you hit. I said, Quirky, what do you mean, dude? I was like, like I'm locked in, let me go hit. Like, what, what do you need? He goes, I can't let you hit, you're going up to the big leagues. I said, no, dude. I said. Like, not, not a good time to joke, like, come on, let me go. He goes, no, seriously. He goes, you know, go pack your stuff, call your parents, call your family, and, you know, you're going to the big leagues. Have fun in San Diego. So that's kind of how I got the news. Um, flew in, I think it was a Wednesday. Um, flew into San Diego early in the morning. Um, got to the field probably in, like, the third inning. Put my jersey on, went out. Didn't play that day. Uh, had an off day the next day, so the whole time I'm like, I just want to play. You know, I just just want to get on the field and experience major leagues and, and you know major league pitching and see what that lifestyle was like. Um, so then I believe it was a Friday, playing the Cardinals. Um, started my first game, was hitting ninth behind the pitcher, uh, so that was a little a little demoralizing, but uh, it was it was fun. Um, first at bat was off John Lackey. First pitch, I'll never forget. It was fastball up, took it. Next pitch was a fastball a little bit, a little bit lower than the one that was just above my head. Took a swing, single up the middle, um, and uh, there's there's no feeling like it. It was incredible, man. It, I don't know. I still have goosebumps to the yeah. day thinking about it. Who was at that game? I had uh, my entire family, my grandpa, fiance. Um, and that was about it. I um, couldn't uh, couldn't really get aunts and uncles there in time. It was kind of a late notes type thing. But uh, yeah, they were all there. We all had fun. I think the biggest thing for a baseball player is to uh, get a mentor, get someone leading you who has been in that you know situation before, who's been a baseball player and knows what it's like. Um, I feel like. Until you know that, you know, until you've experienced all the temptations out there and know what it's like to be a baseball player and the pressure and, you know, the grind of it, it's tough to have a mentor. So I was, you know, fortunate enough to have Andy Green, um, strong Christian, super spirit filled, and, uh, you know, he really kind of took me under his wing. And there's been times where, where I go in and, and talk with him, go into his office, and we don't talk about baseball. You know, it's just about you know how I'm doing, how the you know the Lord's working in my life, how the Lord's working in His life, and anything that He feels like is, is on His heart that He wants to share with me, He can do that. And 
yeah, we'll talk for 45 minutes and not not talk about baseball. So he's he's the best manager I've ever had. He's, you know, I, I have the best relationship with him, and uh, you know, it's it's, it's perfect. Um, other than that, I would say my fiance is a mentor. Um, she she just knows the Lord, and, and she knows the Lord and had a relationship with him for longer than I've had, and you know, we can talk about stuff and and I don't know, just the way she breaks stuff down for me is is, is perfect for me. Tell you what was was awesome is this off season um, we got baptized together. It was awesome. We went down to a, a Christian conference together, and uh, you know it was, it was kind of funny because the whole time like I knew that you were going to get baptized or you, you had the option to get baptized, and I don't like being the center of attention. Uh, I just I feel uncomfortable with it, and so the whole time I'm like no, like I'm not going to do it. Like I'll do it back, you know, at our church. It'll be better. Like it's more tight knit. Last day comes, and you know the, the guy, the, the preacher, is saying, "Hey, we have uh, you know baptisms tonight. If anybody would like to get baptized, go ahead and you know send out like a little you know piece of paper, let us know, and so we can put you on the list." So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, you know, "How can I get out of it? Like, I don't want to be the center of attention. How can I get out of it?" And I'm thinking in my head, like, you know, I can use the excuse that, "Oh, we'll just do it when we get home. You know, it's a, it's a closer, you know, tight knit family. It'll be it'll be better when we're back home." And, thinking to myself like you know uh, maybe now it's just not the right time you know, maybe it's just not the right time and sure enough the preacher says you know some of you guys might be in your in your seats thinking now it's not the right time and I'm like wait what I was like is this guy like read my mind and he's like you know maybe you're thinking you want to go back to your church at home because you know you're close with those people there and you know maybe maybe it's just a little more like uh, you know a little more like ordinary for you instead of out of the ordinary and I'm like what's going on here like this is freaking me out so um, I look at Lynn's and I'm like Lynn's like I'm gonna get baptized tonight I want you I want you by my side so we got baptized together and uh, you know I think that was a huge just step in, in, in our relationship and then declaring it to everyone else you know we're living for the Lord and, and what our relationship is about is for him not you know for anyone else first thing I do when I get up is read the Bible uh, yeah, so right now I'm reading Romans, um, chapter 5, just finished it today, and it's kind of one of those things. I have a Bible study um, with a whole bunch of people from the, from the conference I went to this offseason. It's, uh, you know, it's a year, read the Bible in a year type thing. I haven't been accountable for it. I, I don't know, it's just been tough for me. So uh, I went back just kind of doing my own thing, picking a book, reading it, meditating on it. Uh, Anyways, back to the routine. Get up, get in the Word. That's the first thing I do. Meditate on it, pray, pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to, you know, understand the Word and live it out and then show it through, you know, my actions and my words to other people. Um, then after that, kind of, you know, eat, go about my daily routine. Um, on the walk to the field, which is a short walk, I'll either listen to, you know, some Christian music or listen to a preacher uh, from, a, from a podcast. Um, get to the field. If anyone's talking about the Lord, I'm definitely in the conversation. Uh, we have a lot of good guys on the team, a lot of Christians on the team. So if anyone's talking about it, I'll hop in, get, give an insight here or there, try and learn something from them. Uh, every Sunday we do a chapel, uh, team chapel, so we get in the Word there every Sunday. Uh, Sunday nights go to the Rock, 6 o'clock service. Uh, it's a good time over there, good, good pastor. Uh, but other than that, nothing too out of the ordinary. Um, Tell you the biggest thing is when I'm going well, I try to pray a lot, and when I'm going bad, I try to pray a lot. That's the biggest thing for me is, you know, when, when things are going well, I want to give God all the credit, all the glory, all the honor. When things are going bad, I want to give Him all the credit, honor, and glory, and know that He's going to get me out of it. He's putting me through this for some purpose later on in life that I, I don't know about right now. I tell you, the first thing was when you mentioned that was 2014. I missed the whole year. Um, I'll kind of a little backstory. So, 2012 got drafted. Um, struggled a little bit to begin with. Finished off really well. Um, so I was in a good place. 2013 had a great year. Um, in a really good place. Was told to put on some weight in the off season. So uh, put on about 15 pounds of muscle in the off season. Kind of just destroyed my body. Didn't feel great. Um, but I know it would pay off. So go through all that in the off season, really put a lot of work in. I think at the time I was 
the tenth prospect for the Padres, number ten prospect for the Padres. So really, kind of, kind of like feeling good about myself, really confident. Um, and then in April, I ended up breaking my elbow and my wrist, um, going into into the wall, fully extended, needed surgery, missed the whole year. And uh, it's incredible that um, you know. And I think it's just in baseball, it's okay. You know, if a prospect gets hurt, we have someone filling their shoes. So in that sense, my relationship with the Lord wasn't great. Um, it wasn't where it is now, and you kind of fall off and you lose your self worth. Um, for me, it was really, really all about baseball. It wasn't about you know helping others out. It was about me. Um, and going through that, man, you learn that baseball is a game. You know, it's 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 a game. It's not your life. It's it's what you do. It's not who you are. So it uh, that was an eye-opening experience for me, man. And it uh, it kind of it kind of really sucked at the time. But I know going through that and realizing that at any point this game can be taken from me, and that's not what my life is about. It kind of helped my relationship with the Lord grow a ton. I went through self-doubt, you know, my career, I still go through self-doubt, but at the end of the day, you have to go home and say, I know I'm a Major League Baseball player, I don't care where I'm at in my life, I'm a Major League Baseball player. That's number one, is knowing it. Two, and I don't know how people do it with, uh, without a relationship with Christ, but having a relationship with Christ is so important to me, and just looking back on it, I don't know how I played college ball, you know, minor league ball where, you know, the accommodations aren't great without a relationship in Christ. Um, it's just something that there's so many temptations around every corner and, and, and so many struggles that you go through without, like, uh, an entire season and, you know, you're with a bunch of guys and, you know, things can get out of hand at times and if you don't have that relationship with the Lord, you don't have that faith in Him, it can lead to some bad stuff. Um, so I think a relationship with the Lord, knowing that this is just a game, you know, it's not, it's not life. It's just, it's what you're doing right now for your career. That's more important than, you know, being this, I guess, stereotypical baseball player. We kind of get a bad rap for being. Um, other than that, working hard, always work hard. Uh, one of my favorite Bible verses is Colossians 3.3. Um, you know, work with all you have for the love of the Lord. About it. But those who wait for the Lord shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint or become tired.